A lot of games have a lot of talk and hype behind them, and then they launch and they fizzle out really quickly. We've got 10 game examples across a variety of different genres to talk about, so let's get started off with number 10. We're starting off with an obvious one, but it's one that people often forget. It's Evolve. Evolve is from Turtle Rock Studios, and this is a big deal because they were the developers of Left 4 Dead. So, switching gears from Valve and Steam to big mainstream publisher 2K, uh, the launch to Evolve made it seem like it was going to be the next big thing. Obviously, people love Left 4 Dead, and that kind of kicked off a lot of fun multiplayer stuff, and Evolve seemed like it was going to be a bigger budget, more emphasis on asymmetrical multiplayer with one player playing as a monster while the other players are hunting down that monster. It seemed like a good idea, but this was also at a time, the early days of games as a service and microtransaction stuff when that stuff was arguably at its worst. Evolve finally launched in 2015 and it got some good reviews and it seems like people liked it, but it seemed to fizzle out very quickly. Despite the game touted by the developers to have, and I quote, the best support for downloadable content ever, just kind of seemed to like a lot of typical, not very memorable stuff. DLC maps, season passes, new hunters and monsters, a ton of skin packs, actually 44 different paid DLC skin packs at launch. That stuff felt kind of gross. But even amidst all that in the early days, the developers 2K were looking at this like the next big thing possibly becoming a pop culture phenomenon, translating over to like, you know, TVs or movies, also getting big into esports. And despite some early promising showings, it seems like, like I said, Evolve kind of fizzled out. Maybe it was the progression system not being so great. I don't know, because technically beneath all of that, there was a cool game, a pretty cool realized world, some good visuals, but it eventually transitioned to free to play in 2016. And then by the end of 2016, the developers announced that they were going to be winding down support for Evolve and further plans for like a Evolve 2.0 or it was called Evolve Stage 2 was not going to be released on consoles. Then by 2018, the game's dedicated servers were shut down and we haven't really heard too much from Evolve since. People playing it and server stuff had popped up a little bit here and there, but as of summer 2023, the game is entirely taken down. So that was that. There was no big crazy future for Evolve. It just kind of unfortunately came and went. Next over at number nine, let's talk Battleborn. This was a free to play first person competitive shooter that was centered in arenas and it was character based stuff. And unfortunately it released around the same time as Overwatch and Battleborn kind of ended up falling to the wayside. Battleborn of course was pretty different from Overwatch. It had some weird, weird, quirky, but kind of cool character designs and some creative ideas here and there, but ultimately it didn't land with us. It didn't really seem to land with too many other players. And that's unfortunate for Gearbox because they were hoping it would be the next big thing. In 2014, we remember leading up to the game's release, uh, head of Gearbox, Randy Pitchford, tweeted, and I quote, Battleborn is first person shooter, hobby grade co-op campaign, genre blended, multi-mode, competitive esports, meta growth, choice plus epic Battleborn heroes. Dude, what does that mean? That sounds like a pile of corporate buzzwords, basically video game words that only get shareholders excited. And it tells me nothing about the game. And that seemingly muddled mixed messaging there translated over to the marketing of the game because it certainly didn't pop off at launch. It got fairly decent reviews. It did hit sales charts, but like I implied at the start, Overwatch released within just a few weeks of Battleborn. And just like a month after release, the concurrent players dropped to like a hundred. They tried things, they added more content, more modes. They added a sort of free trial, free to play-ish mode, but it definitely didn't reach the heights that seemingly Gearbox was hoping. That's all right, Gearbox. At least we still got Borderlands. But next over at number eight, we have Marvel's Avengers. Now, this one didn't die super quick. It actually hung on for a while. And it did find an audience, to be fair. And when we played it, we really actually kind of liked the single player campaign, at least for what it was. But this game was designed to be a kind of endlessly replayable Marvel Avengers superhero games as a service game. They wanted you buying skins, buying expansion packs, 
jumping into play events, and engaging with your friends online all endlessly as your favorite, you know, Captain America or Iron Man or what have you. Well, I think a lot of people would just kind of want a Marvel's Avengers cool single player experience and not a cynical multiplayer thing. The game did find an audience. Despite that, it was the subject of so much ridicule online in the hardcore gaming crowd. Its post-launch stuff didn't always make the best decisions. And after release, players kind of dropped up and down as there were bugs, rough issues, and then some interesting expansions when character additions like Spider-Man or Black Panther would bring people back here and there. But it was a hard walk to the finish line or really the end of the roadmap because so quickly after launch, the player count dropped substantially. Well, like we keep saying, we know some Game Ranks viewers out there continued to play the game consistently with all the updates and free stuff. It had paid XP boosts and stuff that just pissed off a lot of other players and ultimately, it just seems like it didn't need to be a live service multiplayer game. This could have been a compelling, regular, straightforward experience. And that's saying something because this was a Marvel's Avengers game released in 2020 when everybody was shut in inside. This game should have ended up the biggest thing in the world, but ultimately the delays, the mixed messaging, and the actual service model of the game itself, the design, served as a roadblock to this thing actually becoming the next big awesome superhero game. It got next generation updates, a lot of stuff ended up being free, but ultimately, after about two and a half years, the developers announced that they weren't supporting it with new content or features in September 2023. At least they gave away all the cool stuff for free at the end, but still, that was it. Next over at number seven, we have Aliens Colonial Marines. This game just had a lot of excitement around it because it seemed like the Aliens game that a lot of people were wanting. Something that embraced James Cameron's awesome sci-fi action film. You're playing as badass Marines with cool weapons, blasting away at aliens, acid blood is flying, and the trailers seemed pretty awesome. It seemed to be what we wanted. Gearbox was like, hell yeah, we're giving you guys what you want. And then it launched and it was nothing at all like advertised. This game fell onto huge controversy for just being not good at all. The first person shooting, the way the aliens attack, the visuals of the game, nothing looked like what it seemed like they were intended. Nothing really looked like how it had pre-release. People were getting hyped up about a new aliens game and what released absolutely sucked. And while it could have been an incredible game that stuck around for a while, like say Alien Isolation, which people still talk about to this day, no, Aliens Colonial Marines released, a bunch of people online got mad at it, and then ultimately moved on. And it was just a fart in the wind in video game history. And at this point, honestly, we feel like we're the only people still talking about it. Next over at number six, we have Haze. This was a game from 2008 that was from the developers Free Radical Design. Now you may not remember that name, but there are some of the people behind Time Splitters. So they know how to make first person shooters. And people were really excited about this one because it just looked cool. The marketing was flashy, the guy on the cover was badass, and a lot of people were dubbing this PlayStation's answer to Halo. This was going to be PlayStation 3's Halo, their fun, awesome, unique, sci-fi first-person shooter. It was going to have this big, deep, compelling plot in the future about these people addicted to the substance where it controls the mind of soldiers. Korn even wrote a song for the game and it released and it was not so great. It got some pretty middling to bad reviews from both the media and players who were all gladly jumping into that whole, is this the Halo killer kind of debate? And ultimately it turned out it was not at all. The campaign was meh, the multiplayer modes were just not very exciting, and ultimately, Haze came and went very quickly. It felt very much like the lead up, the previews, the trailers, the magazine, exposés and breakdowns, all of that lasted way longer than the game actually did after launch. Next over at number five, do you remember Fast and Furious Crossroads? Yeah, most people don't. The funny thing about this one was that it was actually announced during the Game Awards in 2019. Towards the end of the show, Vin Diesel himself came out with Michelle Rodriguez. I mean, we're talking Dominic Toretto and Letty out on stage. And Vin Diesel said, hey, we got a new game coming out. It's a Fast and the Furious game. It's going to be awesome. And that was it. And people were like, what the hell? Cool. Then complete radio silence. We didn't hear anything about this game. It was quietly delayed during the pandemic. Eventually, it finally released in the summer of 2020 and nobody noticed. 
I mean, we noticed. We put out a video on the game and reviewed it. It was just kind of this weird, goofy, junky arcade racer that, you know, had a little bit of charm to some of its racing and crashing action, but the whole Fast and the Furious presentation was half-assed and phoned in, literally. It sounds like some of the characters voice their character via cell phone. They wanna play with fire? And let's turn up the heat. And it's a shame because frankly, the Fast and the Furious franchise deserves so much more. I mean, the movies at this point are practically video games. So you think that check would write itself, but nope. This Bandai Namco published Fast and the Furious game was very quickly forgotten. Now down over at number four, we have the culling or really the culling two. The original Culling was a first-person battle royale game, and people really seemed to enjoy it. It wasn't like a hundred players drop onto an island like a Fortnite or a PUBG. This was initially 16 players in an arena, and it had some quirks to it that people really seemed to enjoy, but unfortunately then PUBG released and the player base kind of dropped. There were plans for the Culling 2, and this was going to be the comeback for the series. It was going to be bigger and better and be able to seemingly compete with something like PUBG. PUBG. It was going to be a fresh take. It was just going to be released completely, not like an early access thing. And when it finally released in 2018, it was a mess. It was totally rough. It feels unfinished to the point where just eight days after launch, they pulled the game from storefronts. They gave everybody refunds, they shut the servers down, and that was it. It's like they completely just shut it down and ran. They tried little comebacks, but really that was it for The Culling. That was a huge conversation for like a week or so. The Culling 2 is coming. Let's see how that is. The Culling 2 is out. Oh God, what is happening? And then a couple of days later, wait, where is The Culling 2? That felt like a flash in the pan if I ever saw one. Next down at number three, we have APB or All Points Bulletin. This was developed by Real Time Worlds, and this is significant because they were the developers behind Crackdown. APB was kind of dubbed by a lot of people to be a Grand Theft Auto online style game before that was really a thing. Kind of a Grand Theft Auto style MMO where players were free to run around a city, cause chaos, steal cars, do crime, yada, yada, yada. So there was a ton of potential. The development went on for a, quite some time, had a lot of press, it had betas, it had an exciting community, but unfortunately it released, it didn't get great reviews, and a lot of people found it to be a little messy and unfinished. Unfortunately, the developers Real Time World at the time were going through some pretty bad financial problems and pretty quickly after the game's release, they went bankrupt and APB was sold off to a different company who eventually like a year or so later, re-released it updated as a free to play game called APB Reloaded. It took a minute for this one to die. I'm not gonna lie. I say that out of personal experience. I had a couple of friends that played APB, but ultimately a lot of people were thinking this would be the next big thing and unfortunately Unfortunately, it just wasn't. And now in 2023, it's dead. Now next down at number two, we have Crossfire X. Crossfire X was announced as an Xbox title, and it was an interesting move specifically because they were bringing over a competitive first person shooter that was beloved in Korea and other Asian territories and, and kind of repackaged that for Western audiences as a new competitive first person shooter. The problem is that there's so many out there that Crossfire really had to stand out. It seemed like it could have been a smart move, right? Taking a proven title that people love elsewhere and, and bringing it over. But unfortunately, what they brought over was a messy, bad game. They added a campaign to it, which props for them for doing that. They actually contracted Remedy to help make a campaign. The campaign actually had some cool ideas to it, but ultimately was still messy and weird. And multiplayer that just was not compelling. A lot of people kind of dubbed it like a bootleg Counter-Strike. And unfortunately, you can't compete with Counter-Strike. This game had bad reviews, and it seems like nobody really bothered playing it. It released February 2022, and it shut down in May of 2023. There are just too many other first-person shooters out there asking for people's time and money and doing a really good job getting it. And unfortunately, Crossfire X just couldn't hack it, and it came and went real quick. It felt like a fever dream. I forgot this one even happened. Now down at number one, we have Babylon's Fall. 
This is from Platinum Games, the developers behind so many incredible games like Bayonetta, Nier Automata, Vanquish, The Wonderful 101, and unfortunately, Babylon's Fall is not one of the good ones. When Platinum misses, they really miss. And this was essentially their attempt at taking some of their combat expertise, specifically kind of with Nier Automata, and uh, make a multiplayer thing. Make a continuous multiplayer live service thing that seemingly nobody really wanted to get on board with. It had a roadmap, it had content planned, but nobody cared. The game at its height only reached like a thousand concurrent players, and that dropped pretty quickly within just like a handful of months later, the player count was literally one person. Babylon's Fall definitely had more headlines for negative reasons. I wouldn't say this one was completely overhyped, but it did die really, really quickly. The studio is hyped for sure. When Platinum makes a game that's good, it's really good. But again, when they fail, oof, we get things like Babylon's Fall and hopefully they don't ever have a misstep like this again. It ended up being a significant financial loss for the publisher of this one, Square Enix, and hopefully everybody learned their lesson here. Will they? I don't know, it's the gaming industry. But hey, those were 10 games we wanted to talk about today, so let us know if you have any of your own examples down in the comments. A game that you were hyped for or you felt it was hyped up, but ultimately disappeared quickly. Let us know anything you want about any of these games. Maybe you like them, good for you. Let us know what you think. But if you like this video and you like talking games with us every day, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But either way, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.